Hello viewers and welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to be playing Darkest Hatsavaya game once again. But this time I'm starting up a new series called Win at Darkest Tower. What I'm going to do there is primarily hold your hand through specific scenarios and tell you what to do, why to do it and how to win it. And I'm going to start off with 1914. As Germany, I'm going to assume that everyone is going to use such settings, such as difficulty will be normal, no AC and tech team takeover, using scenario end date and everyone can start war being turned off. Of course using counters is very secondary so it shouldn't really matter much. So let's jump, so let's just jump straight into this. So in Germany in 1914 we have a pretty big army, a great industry, some manpower in reserve, excellent tech teams, even being rather um, advanced when it comes to technology. But I'm going to show you what to research and why. Of course, during the World War I scenario, you like to focus on doctrines, because they give you an advantage in the long run. Getting the automatic feed tabulator is important because it increases your research speed. More research speed equals faster research, who would have thought. This logistics um, technology will be very great to research because it gives you transport capacity modifier, which is this. It basically means how well your units are supplied and how quickly they reinforce. Plus it also gives a repair modifier, which means that your units reinforce faster is extremely important. Now uh, these are fairly important technologies. Getting 1915 production is fairly important as well because it gives you plus three percent IC. That's always nice to see. <laughs> Getting early mechanization is important too since it gives a little bit of industry and some supplies production efficiency. Now Getting 1915 submarines is also an, an interesting task, along with better torpedoes. Why? Well, while we do have a pretty big surface navy, as a new buy, you don't really need to use it to get W in World War I here. Yes, you heard me right. You don't need that. So now, we're going to check our ministers. Going one towards Hulk Lobby here is pretty nice because it maxes it out, so that means you can remove your descent, excuse me, so you can remove your descent faster and make stuff quicker as well. Who cares about the diplo action cost? Now the ministers here for Germany are, well, almost perfect. I would choose this person as head of intelligence instead because of the research time uh, minus 5%. So, why the ministers are perfect? Well, this one gives industry and he's on average the golden standard with which you can't quite go wrong. Uh, this one gives money production and manpower growth, you can't really go wrong with that as well. But unless you have a lot of descent, you can choose a different minister. Such as this one that decreases consumer good needs, because your descent is going to decrease. This person is great, because we're going to be doing a lot of fighting. Plus, I don't think our army is that colossal to eat up a lot of supplies. And Moltke in this situation is amazing, because he gives um, unit speed. And as chairman in World War One, we need to knock out France quickly and then focus everything against Mr. Nikolai over here. Now, troop allocation. What I'm going to do now is um, obviously allocate my troops. How I'm going to do that? Well, I'm going to check against the Russian front how many province, how many sides a province can be attacked from. So, for example, Katowice um, can be attacked from two provinces. So I'm going to send ten infantry divisions there, one for every province that they can attack from. Well, provinces such as Torun can be only attacked from one side, so I'm going to send uh, five divisions there in total. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. 
till sit is going to get five as well. There we go. Uh, okay, so I'm going to let the units try to deploy there and then I'll um, check out the, I suppose, um, specifics of when they appear there. We have hindsight and a whole month to prepare for the war. So, why exactly that many units? Well, I found out it's probably the best to keep that many units there because it's most of the time enough to hold Russia off. So, what I am going to do now is transport a few troops here into Kolmar. You don't really need too many units to defend it, considering that it's a fortified forest province. It can be attacked from two sides, of course, but that's why I'm sending extra units there. Strasbourg doesn't really need to be defended too, too well. Maybe leaving four units there is a decent plan. It has a level 6 fort and can only be attacked from one side, so they don't really get any bonuses from attacking from one side compared from two sides. And Metz, well, it has a level 10 fort. I can just, you know, <laughs> leave three units there and that will be more than enough. Even maybe two, but... Mm, just as in case I'm not going to risk it too too much So we're going to be doing the standard Schlieffen plan. Why exactly? well, just in case really <laughs> because um, That's probably the easiest Route to win this with and I don't see how that can be a bad idea We're also going to move the rest of the troops here to Klaipeda uh, They're guarding the coast because uh, we do need everything against Russia here, for obvious reasons. They are a strong behemoth that can attack us from the east and yeah. Can't underestimate them. And I'd imagine that the rest of the troops can be sent to Allenstein. I can maybe get away with sending only 12 troops here because this is a forest province. Plus it's fortified with four land forts. So... Everything else here is going to be thrown against Belgium. Yeah, I just can't quite resist doing the other Germany, huh? But what I would also like to do is make it so that my generals are up to par command size-wise. Why? Well, they don't lose their skills and modify and experience as a general um, if the command limit is looked after and the HQ bonus apparently does not uh, fix that so yes uh, plus you get a very big overstack bonus if you kind of just ignore the command limit completely which is not wise at all so let us unpause the game after um, sorting everything out to see how everything is <sighs> Oh, well, I didn't sort out in the ship, unfortunately. Yeah, I just completely ignored the surface navy. You don't really need that. But what we do now need is to make a crack ton of supplies. Well, we need supplies, of course, to win the war. And that probably helps a lot. Oh. Also, this escape of SMS Gopin and SMS Breslau is a good idea to enact. Just send us two ships to the agency. And once World War I can kick off, you can kind of give them to the Ottomans and there'll be a bigger chance that they'll join the war on your side, which I'd imagine is pretty important. So, yes. This guy's moving to Koblenz. Yep, that's good. Um, it's, of, yeah, of course, it's not super ideal to make it so that every infantry... I guess army is 12 units exactly, but all things considered, it's also not a bad plan. Uh, because it makes commanding the army significantly more simple, which I do like. And as a new buy, you probably shouldn't just try to... Uh, try, to, uh, well, try hard, I guess. You just need to win the scenario and then once you know how to win it approximately you can do whatever the heck you want 
So now we are waiting for World War One to kick off. As you can see, our supplies are piling up very well, which I love to see. My troops are appearing where I need them to, which is great. And let's check. Oh, yeah, I apparently did not send any units to Glavitz, which is a bit unfortunate. Oh well, no matter. We can send these guys to Glavitz, these five divisions, well, just in case. It's not like they're going to make that much of a colossal difference against France. We are not quite reached the supply stockpile yet, so we can keep producing them until Russia Hungary does their thing and drags us into World War One. And there we go. Russia mobilizes, and Austria Hungary has declared war upon Serbia. How unfortunate. Though we are going to ally them by event, I believe. Or you can ally them manually, and the Ottomans propose a defensive pact. Of course, you can agree to that, because um, th there's a bigger chance the Ottomans are going to join the war on your side, and they can be a decent distraction. The Baghdad Railway is very secondary to do, but I mean, just in case, press continue construction. And we should declare war upon Russia by event, because as far as I know, it gives you general mobilization. Now what general mobilization does is obviously give you a crap ton of manpower, which is very needed. But what I should have probably done beforehand is not dump all my industry into supply, so let's do this now. And theoretically it should... Oh, I kind of missed that event completely, whoops, or well, whatever. Let's see if this works out. Oh, and it does, excellent. So, I guess what you need to do is just kind of remove supply production completely before enacting general mobilization. Because um, general mobilization eats some of your supplies that you've produced, and I'm with less supplies than I should have had, but hey, it happens. I'm not perfect as well, who would have thought. So now that we have some descent after general mobilization or in general, so we're going to do Sacred Union event, which decreases my descent ever so slightly. Alright, so the war against France has not started yet, it's only against Russia, so what you can probably do is a, just kind of throw some attacks at them that aren't meant to be super serious, but they can kind of, I guess, tease Russia a little bit into losing uh, some territory, but, ah, and there we go. Ask France for neutrality. Demand. We're going to do the basic Schlieffen plan, because why not really? So, now it is very, okay, wait, I did not combine my cavalry divisions here, and it's quite important to see if you have any logistics wizards. Why? Well, logistics wizards kind of increase your effective supply efficiency, which means that your units will fight better and be a little bit faster while on the road. Unfortunately, I don't think I have any other logistics wizards within my army because I sent everything to auto assign. But, but it is what it is, at least I have one. So. Let's kickstart everything by invading Belgium and attempting to blitz through France. So the situation there is against France is decent now. What y you should do is produce a lot of supplies and manually reinforce your units by putting um, industry into reinforcement. Yep, as I've said, you need to win this war quickly. It is very important. Is a rather very important task. Yep. Giving extra orders is also pretty fairly nice to do if you don't forget them as well, because your units will instantly start going after the enemy. And this point let's just annex Luxembourg because we can. So the Russian front for me is acceptably well. The Russians are not really pushing against Austria Hungary nor me as well. What if you really wish to min max, you can mill control Austria Hungary and defeat Serbia faster. Well, I'd imagine that's a little bit too annoying, so 
I'm just going to do it the old fashioned way. Be very careful while looking at the battles. And if possible, you can, well, rather you even need to try to get to the sea. Either in Aimeans, Dunkirk, Bruges, whatever. You need to gain access to the sea quickly. Um, as Germany here against Belgium. And these cavalry units are going towards Sedan as a distraction of sorts against the French. So, yes. It is quite important to call off divisions here in the north because you can encircle them and destroy them, meaning that the enemy will not be able to use them anymore. So you see here that Russia is attacking me. We can kind of remove a fair bit of the pressure by attacking from Allenstein. Excellent. That was a success. And we can maybe take Plotsk at this rate. And since Russia has not reinforced Radom, we can probably win there as well. Great. For me. So my units are attacking into Mons, which is very nice. Uh, we need more units to get into there and want to guard Arlon. Because um, you don't really want to leave your front line unguarded against the enemy, trust me. So my stronger units are going into Mons here, as you can see. So what I am just going to do is attack there very aggressively because I want to take these French provinces and yeah the distraction in Sedan is working the AI is probably not quick enough to transport the troops that it needs there so well looking at the French front do not ignore the Russian front um, you have a decent army guarding against it which is very nice, but as I've said, you need to look out just in case Russia does something uh, rash there. <laughs> yes. So, okay, we are winning here, and yeah, we're going to go to Amiens instead. I think that will be a better idea. So one of these divisions that is going into Mons can attack Brussels. Because this province in Namur is unguarded. Yes. So, my cavalry is attacking here in Amiens. So I'm going to support attack from Lille and into there. Which I'd say is a great plan. Mons is unguarded. Yes, but we can take it back very easily. Without trouble. And Russia is being beaten by me. Which I do love to see. It's very nice to hold defensive positions against them while you're dealing with France, and if you don't manage to lose any units, then you're in the clear. So of course the attack on Sedan is a complete failure, but that does not matter to me since I'm achieving my goals of beating the French down here. And encircle them here in the north. Now what I could also do now, just to completely throw them out of the war, is do the offensive chit. Yeah, it gives you pretty Epic modifiers for 30 days. So I'm going to use that to my advantage, to put it lightly. This cavalry division should have probably been let, left off the hook sooner, but I don't think really, I don't really think it matters at this point. But what does matter is, is the fact that I need to close this pocket in Amiens, which the Frenchies do not want to give up. That's rather that's rather heroic of them, but it's not going to make a difference in the end. So as you can see here, my cavalry broke into the north and they're doing quite a little bit of damage by encircling them there. So there are a total of 11 divisions that are completely out of the picture. And we can continue this little adventure here by just completely destroying them to the end. Which I do love to see. So once we take them, let's look at Russia. The Russian front is doing exceptionally well. We are pushing them in Poland and we are about to take Warsaw, which is great. That means that you're going to get a descent hit, which will set them back quite significantly. <sighs> and we are crushing the Belgians in Dunkirk, which is also a fairly epic sight. 
the Fre we are kind of doing well against the French here in Harrison, so let's cement that little success there by beating them completely. We can, just in case, put one division here from the, I guess, mini Maginot line that we have on both sides um, into Antwerp. Because it's quite possible that the British are going to naval invade me here, which I do not want to experience at all. Okay, we push into Redon, so let's just continue the offensive by helping in Lublin. And uh, we took Warsaw as well! So that's probably a decent descent hit on the Russians. And as I've said, 11 units have been completely destroyed in Calais. I'm going to send one infantry army into um, Amiens here, because uh, two is a, a little bit of an overkill, plus uh, if they get there faster they can do damage quicker. But hypothetically, wait, it will be better to send them into Lille, because they'll get there quicker. Yes, excellent. So I just support attack here uh, with the cavalry, and those 11 divisions just exploded completely. So we're just practically running circles against the French, and let's attack Laon with the cavalry as well. Oh, and it seems that Austria-Hungary is also putting in some level of work. They just encircled uh, three of uh, three Russian divisions there, but they are not winning in Serbia, which is depressing. So at this point, I might as well help them in case they keep doing stupid stuff. And Austria-Hungary collapsing will just make things 20 times harder for you than they should be. Okay, at this point I say that I have enough supplies here, that I don't really need to produce them. But just in case I'm going to make a few more. Okay, my units... I think I are even doing better than the French did in our timeline, which is nice to see. Now, what I would do now is just attack Chateau 3, if I'm uh, pronouncing it correctly. If not, yeah, whatever. Now, what would be better is to support attack from this province here into Chateau 3, um, to take it faster, but uh, whatever. It's going to be taken by me anyway. So my transport capacity modifier here, as you can see, is a little bit overloaded by the fact that... Oh. They're going to attack into Radon. Well, okay, let me explain the TC thing first. So you can see here that my units are not getting fully supplied here. The supply efficiency is only 95% because of my poor TC modifier due to redeploying troops. So be careful when redeploying troops because that kind of kills their combat efficiency, to put it lightly. And when the AI attacks like this into Radom, um, if they get a few units there, but they lose in Silice, that will mean that those troops in Radom will be encircled. And that's the AI stupidity for doing so, which will give to you a free few units. Because Units being out of the game in Darkest Hearts of Iron game is very dangerous uh, for you. Because you won't be able to use them anymore. Shocker, I know. So let's, let's, uh, so let's attack the panel. And support attack in Reims, just in case really. Because, yeah, I want that battle to be won, so that there will be no trouble down the line. We can probably take Paris already, but I want to take another province just in case to show you how why taking from multiple sides is a good idea. So, I'm attacking Paris here, as you can see. It's September and I'm already Paris, it's possible to get there quicker, but... As long as you get there at all, you're in the clear. Okay, and my units also get ah, this offensive thing that I uh, keep pressing. It basically increases their effective supply efficiency, which modifies their attack modifier. So that 
makes this, uh, the attack significantly stronger. So as you can see here, I'm attacking... Uh, wait, where is this? Experience Urban. Ah, no, never mind. Usually if you attack from multiple provinces uh, into one, you get like an enveloped bonus, which makes attacking easier. I just don't see it, but take my word on it that this is a very good idea. Plus, attacking from multiple sides means that the unit amount that you can attack with without stack, without suffering a penalty increases. It's 48 now, but if I attack from just one direction, it will be 24. Okay, so it looks like Austria-Hungary in force here in Aradom. Nothing terrible about that. Let's just take the prawns then. And it looks like they got encircled in Lwov. I'm <laughs> gonna have to deal with that stuff. But it's not gonna matter soon because Paris is gonna fall eventually. Yeah. Should have probably just sent the cavalry here to attack instead because they'll probably get a little bit faster than infantry. But whatever. We can also send one more division here from Rostock into Belgium just in case, you know. It's not gonna hurt. In case the British just try to pull one on me. And as you can see here, the French are trying their best to reinforce Paris, but that's not working out, because I have a lot of units attacking it. The units that are attacking it have artillery and um, super heavy artillery, which means that as you can see here, the fortification attack uh, bonus is much better. And France is just going to die. Well, my offensive cheat is over. You can just unpause while this event hangs sometimes and be completely okay, but there's no need for little exploits here if we have already won the war. I, I, I don't think that France instantly surrenders after this, so you might have to just take a few more provinces to mess with them. To completely ins uh, assert your dominance over the French. So after beating France up, let's bully Russia now. T attacking and taking Helm here will be pretty good. Um, yeah, it's probably a little bit too late for that, but if we attack this province and um, Pshamisil would have been the only province that's connected to it, the Russian units would have been encircled and that would have been a very easy win for me, which I like to see. Now I'll take this Troyes province now. Uh, excuse my pronunciation, it's obviously imperfect. Uh, and here you can see that uh, they are trying to land naval units here, however it's a little bit too late for that. Thankfully, I have cavalry to sort that out. So yes, mm, as I've said before, always reinforce your coasts, even if the war is gonna be quick. This is just kind of them being annoying more than dangerous. But still, you can't underestimate the AI, because yeah, it can be very annoying. Alright, my cavalry divisions are quite close there. And, and taking Longi, it's probably not super important at this point, but it does narrow the front line a little bit, which is good to see. Now, I'm not sure if I encircled those Russian divisions here, but we can try for an encirclement here in Longe and attack into Ostrolika. Yeah, probably pronouncing that a little bit wrong. But since Longe is fortified and we are attacking through a river, it will be a bit difficult to win there. However, that's not gonna stop me from trying completely, <laughs> or at all, rather. So since this uh, little coastal guard division is here, it can help out. And these two armies that are attacking can also get the offensive modifier. Yeah, just to, just to help them. Yep, so now those three divisions have fallen. If you really wish to min-max, you could have made militia divisions to guard the coast afterwards. However, I did not do that. But what you really need to do, yeah, I'm pro I was probably a little bit slow on this, is make submarines. Uh, 
not just to challenge the British within the seas, but to make it so that an event that's going to be coming up will not be so detrimental to the war effort. Plus, at this point, since you've won, you can just start spamming industrial capacity. The very first year of the war, until 1915, is extremely important, because it kind of decides everything for you. And yeah, I kind of forget, forgot about my one little army here, uh, going into Serbia. <laughs> And kind of possible that I'm not going to, yeah, I'm not going to win against them because they're quite well reinforced. But what I'm going to do now is at least help the Austrians. So we have researched one technology, which is great. And researching indirect blood transfusions is not a horrible idea because it gives trickleback modifier. What's trickleback modifier? Well, it means that the casualties that you suffer during. Um, a, a battle, you, you see the red number, which obviously means that it's not really good. And a percentage of that red number returns into your manpower pool. So if I suffer, for let's say, 100,000 losses and my trickleback modifier is 5%, that will mean that I will get back yeah, 5,000 or 5 manpower into my pool, which is quite nice, not going to lie. Yeah, this Lomja offensive isn't quite working out, so I'm just going to stop it here. Yeah, the Austro-Hungarian here attacking to Serbia is not going extremely well, but hey, it's something. Yep, I'm not winning in Longi, as you can see here. Winning at Verdun is just going to be impossible for me, because it's a fortified area. So, we're just going to stop this offensive. And instead I should have probably focused on attacking France more than anything. Which is a mistake by me, but as I've said, it happens. So, let's take Oru. I believe that's how it's called, and they're trying to counter-attack me here in Sedan. It's probably a little bit of a mistake on their part. Because I can uh, relieve the pressure here in Verdun. Because their units are in battle. And I can be very annoying with that. This division is being re uh, reinforced as well. So once it's reinforced enough, it can probably do some damage here in Longi. Yeah, the Russian front is in a stalemate, which is not ideal, but it is what it is. And looks like Montenegro is being pushed back by the Austrians, which I like to see. I did have to help them out a little bit, but, oh well. Excuse me now, my nose is a little bit stuffy. Which does happen. So it does not quite look like that the French are gonna stop attacking me here in Sedan. Japanese ultimatum, just don't even bother to answer. What's the worst that can Japan do to you besides take a few coastal provinces, Lamau? But yes, what? Yeah, what I did need, what I did need to do probably is just continue the attack on France after taking Paris, because now they're being extraordinarily annoying to me, and I do not like that. What it is, what it is. I'm s uh, uh, slowly beating them in Longvi and Verdun, which, in my opinion, is worth it. So let's attack them in Charte now. And uh, three British divisions that have landed here. And my units can't quite do anything against them. However, I did take Verdun. <laughs> which is a level 8 fortified province. So that's extremely good. Just so you know. I should probably, yeah, send the cavalry divisions back. And what would have been... Ah, never mind. But yes, what would have been ideal, of course, for me to do is to decrease my units, or rather my armies, and um, send the singular divisions to guard the coasts here. Like, so for, for example, this 12th division army, well, I can just send this division, this one, to guard the coast, which I should have probably done, but I was expecting France to surrender significantly sooner and didn't pay too much 
mind to it. But as you can see here, France has surrendered to me officially. So that's only, yeah, and this, <laughs> these divisions that were retreating from Sedan went into to the right direction. Now the Treaty of Versailles time. Are you going to impose harsh conditions for obvious reasons? We're going to take a few provinces here off of the French. Which is very epic, to put it lightly. And we have less provinces to guard here, because we only have Belgium to guard coastwise. So for Belgium, we're going to make them a part of the nation. I'm going to annex a part of Wallonia and the Congo. Perhaps those three divisions that landed there, um, they're mine now, to put it lightly. Alright, now what we must do is start slowly shifting the divisions that we have here against the Russians. But Austria-Hungary is being a little bit of a dum-dum here, so it's not a bad idea at all to send a few divisions to help them out. So these divisions that guarded the Alsace Lorraine line, to put it lightly, I don't really remember how it's called officially, they can do something against the Frenchies. Uh, not against the Serbians, rather. And unfortunately I can't try to deploy my units out of enemy territory, so they're going to have to walk to the closest province before I can do anything to them. So it says it's enemy in sight, United Kingdom, it doesn't matter at this point, it's just somewhere in Africa. Which is, you know, not super duper bad. We can take back Africa after the war ends. So I'm making the submarines. I should have probably been making them a little bit fast, uh, a little bit sooner, because the British may enact that event fairly soon. But I don't truly really think it matters at this point, unless you want to take over the United Kingdom, which I could do within this video. And. Uh, once I beat up friends, the Ottomans decided to join me. How epic. Just in case, if you re really want to be extra secure, you can make a few militia divisions and put them against the French border. Because I've had experiences, so to speak, when France just kind of went off the rails and did declare war upon me after the Treaty of Versailles, so if you really want to avoid that, you can make a f just a few militia divisions and put them against the French border to kind of stop their attack. Not completely defeat them, even if they are weakened after everything, but just slow it down before your actual army arrives to crush them a second time. Alright, my little army here has arrived to help against the uh, evil Serbians entering Hungary for some reason. Yeah, there was probably a bit overkill for me to send so many units there, but as I've said, Austria Hungary collapsing is horrible, and me preventing that is very important. So, after Schreiter deploying, le uh, let's let these divisions reinforce a little bit because it is important too, and they need to reorg as well. So these 11 divisions can probably go here into the south of Austria-Hungary. No, no, wait, well not the south, but to complete east. To potentially encircle a few divisions and liberate these guys here that got a little bit lost. So these 11 divisions here are just going to mop up the Serbians. Nothing wrong with that. That is their job, so they might as well do it. So allow me to attack Bialystok with everything that I have. Yep, the, uh, the Russians here are being completely squashed by me. It's not even funny. 
I should also probably wait a little bit for my units to try to redeploy before I launch any offenses, because as I've said, it does hurt their combat ability, but I don't really think it matters too much at this point if I'm attacking them with overwhelming odds. Leal is closer to Mons, so I should have probably sent them to go into Mons. And these guys as well. So they are going there now, and they will be there soon. Which is great for me. To play lightly. Now, after reinforcing, what is ideal to do is place the units a couple of tiles uh, before the enemy. Why? Well, because if an enemy enters a territory that the unit is shrite redeploying into, it will cancel the shrite redeploy and the Strider deploying unit will be sent back where it's Strider deploying from or back to your capital. It depends on the mod. So just be safe about all of it, okay? Okay. So I still want to perform this encirclement here in Australica, even if the Russians are kind of seeing what the hell I'm up to. However, that's not going to stop me from at minimum trying it out. So these units are going to attack in Lomja, which is difficult to win here. However, since Lomja is difficult to defeat, we can just kind of march into Volkovysk, because this province is not defended particularly well, and the Russian units are retreating, so we can take advantage of that. So they only have six units defending it. And we're attacking in winter, which is probably not good at all. Okay, the Germans are trying to stop my offensive here by attacking from Suwalki. That's not going to help at all, because that kind of just weakens their positions and it allows me to take that province with a fairly big chance of it succeeding. However, uh, these boys in Bialystok, I'm not really sure they're going to win here because their reinforcements are taking forever to arrive. And yep, I got lucky. And the reinforcements arrived in time. Yeah, this all, the, the fact that my unit's combat ability is also not particularly ideal is hurting me a little bit in this situation, but it is what it is. So more units are straight redeploying against the Russian front, which I like to see. We deploy like 10 units into hell. So I'm going to send these divisions to fight in Tarnopol. Because we can potentially encircle them there. By taking Tarnopol and Hutin or Cernelti. Right, Lomja. It's fairly important. Well, it's not super important to take at this point, but it would be nice if we took that province for ourselves. But it's extremely likely that the Russians are going to start aggressively attacking me. Or not. Or not, it seems. Let's attack Suwalki now to help these divisions. Yeah, this province is very well reinforced, so the Russians can't do crap about it, most likely. Even if their units are encircled. So the Serbians have been mostly dealt with. I, I think they only need to take one more province, which is Nice. And let's destroy them in those encircled divisions in Tetovo. We can build the Baghdad Railway, as you can see here, it's not really important. Yeah, overhauling coastal defenses for the Dardanelles is nice. Getting some coastal forts in Gallipoli for just a hundred supplies, which is basically for free, let's be honest. Yep, the militia divisions have not been made yet, and these are the final divisions. Uh, that I have. So let's try to deploy them in Przemysl. Oh, so yeah, quite a few divisions have made it into Lvov, which I'll love to see. Okay, that Tetuo encirclement failed, but it doesn't matter. Oh, yes, I have researched mass charge, so it's time to research static defense further. I have researched better submarines as well, so I should put these on auto-upgrade once they have been made. 
What we are going to do is bully the Royal Navy with the submarines that I am producing to potentially make it so that um, we can naval invade into the United Kingdom. Yes, it's possible. Uh, as World War I Germany, but just quite annoying. So since these Russian divisions are completely encircled here, we can start pounding on them, to put it lightly. I know that sounds lewd, but it does sound true. Now, what we, what we can do is wait for them to starve, but I want to defeat Russia quickly, so I'm going to throw men at them and win in the end. Oh, it looks like the Austro-Hungarians aren't doing too badly here. They took a few Russian divisions down here in Sibiu, which I like to see quite a bit. And um, yeah, we are in a very good spot here. It's 1915, and we have well, practically won World War One. We just need to knock Russia out of it and the British as well. Right, this Lomja pocket is going to be closed very soon. Yep, there we go. They basically exploded there. And let's send a few divisions to the northern front now. Because I want to do some encirclements in the Baltics. Hey, now your kingdom is taking provinces, but who cares at that point, really? Yeah, these... 11 divisions that are going by foot here, I hypothetically should make it so that they close the Sibiu pockets with complete confidence, just in case something dumb happens. Hey, it does not look like I'm dominating here in Ternopil quite yet. So I'm going to wait for reinforcements to arrive and for these boys to reorg. Yeah, my ministers here, let's say, are pretty well adjusted. I'm not being attacked by anyone anywhere, so there's no real point to get a defense minister. Yeah, my units also need to reinforce and dig in, in some places, which is not a bad thing at all. Yeah, they have 27 divisions in Ternopil, which is quite a few, let's be honest. And they're not going to break out of Sibiu, and there are 5 divisions there apparently, because I'm not going to let them. Now at this point, since we have superior numbers, we can just throw everyone into Ternopil. And... Uh, wait... Yeah, uh, these guys can attack here, and these can support attack into Alitos. Because having mobile units attack is, is amazing as well. Yeah, we're going to liberate Lithuania here from the Ruskis. It would have really helped if I attacked from multiple sides, but whatever. Russia has already lost 15 divisions and they, as I've said, they are very difficult to replace. And I do hope that I can get into Vilno here. That will be a colossal win for me, since I will be able to encircle the Baltics, basically. Hmm. We're going to send these infantry units to help out here in Vilna. And it looks like we're winning the battle here, because the Russian units are very deorged. It does not seem like the little Ternopil pocket that I had planned here worked out, but hey, it happens. So since Serbia has died, I'm going to try to deploy these five units here into hell. To make a full, I guess, division of sorts. Well, no, a, a decently sized army group, rather. Completely winning here in Ternopil, which is great to see. It does not look like any Russian divisions are going to go into Serenauti, so good on them. <sighs> Early mechanization, excellent, I got that fairly important technology. And I've also researched something else, which I unfortunately did not pay attention to because I just keep clicking spacebar to skim through everything. Okay, it's 1915 now and I think it's an okay idea to start rushing some fairly important technologies. Like, 
wait a second. Okay, now these technologies give submarines max positioning, so I'm going to start researching trade interdiction submarine and hope I get it early enough. It started in 1915 and yeah. I don't want to toot my own horn, but I'm doing very well here. Grodno is a swamp province, so let's see if I can try to take it with superior numbers. Plus it has a fortification, so it seems I'm doing okay. Ah, good. We have made a few militia divisions here. So let's guard this general area first. Now what I'm going to do after placing them down is make them auto-upgrade into regular infantry divisions. Why is that? Well, why not really? I need better units than whatever this is. And I can get them for free down the line, so... Yep, there we go. The... Yes, I'm unfortunately out of supplies, so... Yep, let's just start making a few supplies here. To give my cavalry divisions the offensive modifier boost. So that they'll get to your cables faster, but... I'm still lacking quite a few supplies, it seems. There we go. Oh, damn it. Uh, I have not gotten the submarines yet, and this is the event that happened. It's basically a British blockade that makes the war a living hell to run, since it kind of increases my descent and destroys my wartime IC modifier. That will be done in me, so I won't really bother decreasing my descent until then. It's only two months away, let's be honest. And there we go, the encirclement that I planned here in the Baltics worked quite spectacularly. I mean, it is a very good idea to manage your descent and you have to do it. Oh! Well, a surprise, it looks like Italy has joined the war on my side, which will make things a trillion times easier. After you defeat France, they usually do not join the war on the Entente side because the AI cannot enact the Treaty of London event. And since this has happened, it means that Italy is kind of alone and AI Austria-Hungary can ask them to join the war on their side. So that's very useful for me. Okay, it looks like Lutsk is under attack here, so... Well, no, rather, is a promise that needs to be taken, so let's do just that, shall we? As you can see here, I encircle the enemies here in the Baltic front. Now it's not a complete encirclement because they're not starving, so they can be probably supported from Liepaja. Yep, they're not suffering from um, a shortage of supplies. But what th this does mean is that they cannot break through and go anywhere. Yes, let's start oh, super focusing on, stop super focusing on the supplies. May 7th is the date where I'm going to lose the descent and the annoying modifier. And it looks like attacking here was a little bit of a bad idea, because the Russians can probably break it, unfortunately. I was extremely overconfident by me here. But, uh, yep, the Russians are going to stop once I win the battle and once I defeat the units that are trying to attack from the encircled piece. So after encircling multiple Russian divisions, what we can do is just push on all fronts. Their army is weakened enough, plus it's going to be um, spring now. And that means that um, there will be no winter to slow my advances down, etc. So what this does mean is the fact that Russia is going to go down. So this efficient supply system is a cool technology to have, because first of all, it increases your repair modifier. And second of all, it m makes it so that your units don't eat up as many supplies as they would otherwise. So getting the tech, while not super duper important, is important. So get it. At this point, let's attack in Brest-Litovsk since it is a fairly important promise to the Russians, because if we take it, they get descent. Oh, and yeah, it is very important to take provinces in World War One that give descent 
to Russia because, well, it makes your job easier and it weakens them quite significantly. So what I'm thinking of doing is pushing for Petrograd because if Russia loses Petrograd, they're going to start getting events um, about them losing the war. And let's be honest, that is what we want to see. They're going to get the, I believe, temporary, no, provisional government and stuff. So that's just going to make things significantly easier for me. So, of course, let's never ignore reinforcement. That was a bit of a mistake by me. Yeah, because the Russians are never going to stop attacking Vilno now, since I forgot to reinforce the troops there. So let's do it after I remembered that it is a fairly important thing that must be completed. Yeah, the Ottomans are also doing okay in the Caucasus and they're not dead yet against the British, so and I can commend them a little bit, I guess. My troops are going into Panevijis. And once they get there, uh, they can uh, confidently go into Yelgava. And once they've broken the units there, I can just switch these units to go into Yelgava and then into Riga. And the Russians will not be able to do anything against them because they're just too powerful. Now, Rovna is very difficult to take because it's a forest province plus it's fortified. Yeah, that was a bit of an overlook by me, but we still want it. And there we go. The submarines have been made, so let's plop them down to Bremen. And where is it? Where is the gosh darn event? Blockade against the United Kingdom. There it is. So you, you get some descent reduced and you get your wartime I see mother fire back. Now I'm not going to do unlimited subby boy warfare because that risks getting the US into the war and I don't want that. So what we can start doing now is just naval interdiction both in um, the day and the night. You can probably see that they went back there because they had low organization. But they can be easily fixed. Alright, I'm advancing on all fronts against Russia fairly easily. And that's amazing. So let's take Proskor off now. This is a Blitzkrieg before the Blitzkrieg. Don't really think that's how it works, but it's looking like that, so I'm not going to complain. So a few more divisions here are in Riga, as you can see, so that is fairly important. I do... Okay, so there was a naval battle here that I unfortunately did not see. Or, yeah. Did not witness, but it doesn't matter too much. Because if... Because if I just keep beating down the British and others, that means I'm going to have a good game. Alright. So, unfortunately, I don't have the technology to build attachments for some reason, even if or early torpedoes are unlocked. But hey, what do I know? Yeah, maybe just su um, submarines are detached. I don't know, torpedoes are detached from submarines, ex excuse me, because of how overpowered they are. So I try to help out here in Valmir, so let's send a few more units there, so that the Russians don't break my lines in that province specifically. Yeah, taking Minsk will be a, f uh, a fairly epic victory for me because I will increase their descent and that's always very nice to see. Alright, so we defeated Russia somewhere in Sarny, that's great. Let's go to Pinsk now. My TC modifier is slowly but... Sh oh, oops. That was a mistake by me. My TC modifier is slowly but surely getting overloaded, but it's not to a degree where it's considered bad, so let's just keep enjoying it while we can. Yep, we're advancing against Russia on all sides. And let's take Daugav Pils now. Even if it is a forest and fortified province, I'm confident that we can win there anyway. Oh, I got 5 descents from somewhere. It's probably from me losing a few too many men during the war. 
That's what happens. And the Austrians took Minsk. So good on them. Probably did not commit enough men to the northern front. Which is a mistake. But it's not like the Russians are going to do much about it since the southern bit is completely free. And yeah, you can just measure how much the center Russia has by by the real chance in Finnish provinces. If it's low, then you need to step up your game and keep taking more and more provinces away from them. So yes, at this point, the Russians can't conceivably do anything to stop me. And after the industry is going to be built, I'm going to work on decreasing the descent that I have suffered. Okay, complete victory in Daugav Pils here. Very nice to see. Okay, let's go after Tar 2 Estonia now, which potentially can open the way for total victory for me. Okay, let's go after Babrusk, like this. This is completely planned, as you can see here. I should also probably send these divisions from Daugav Pils to help in Polotsk. And there I go. Yep, Russia... Uh, Mozir. Yeah, Mozir is a swamp province, plus it's defended by a river, so sending just a little bit of help there is not a bad plan at all. They're uh, trying to retreat here into Rechitsa, so let's fix that, shall we? Oh, there's a very cheeky encirclement here I can do. I can just kind of go into Pskov, or at least try to before the Russians figure out what I'm doing, and these six divisions are going to just disappear completely. Since the Russians are not seeing this, let me take Vitebsk. Well, the AI does see this, but it's probably just not reacting to it, which is its own downfall. Alright, let's help the Austrians here. Yeah, this is basically free reign against the Russians. And yeah, my industry has been built, which I like to see. It will increase my overall IC amount. And what it will also do indirectly is help my transport capacity modifier, because it's uh, less than ideal, to put it lightly. But yeah, it's quite close to being overloaded to the war in Russia. So as you can see here, that work like a charm because the AI is not particularly amazing when it comes to handling the front line. Okay. And, but we are making great gains within the center as well. And that's all that matters. Now I think if you take Petrograd or Moscow you just win automatically. Whatever happens we have basically one at this point let's be honest. So I don't need to worry about it too much. So let's take Orsha now. And as I've said, if there's a chance for encirclement, do whatever the heck you want, but take that and abuse it as much as you can. Okay, that's going to Chernigov and now into Kiev. So if you, yeah. Basically, the Russian descent skyrockets if you keep taking victory point provinces from them, which I am trying my best to do right now, as you can see. Oh, damn it. Um, they're on this singular island. Ugh, yeah, the, this is a little bit of a problem that can happen here if you fight Russia. If they get stuck on this island, there is no way that you can... Uh, defeat them there. So what I'm just going to do is just send one division to kind of guard it while I go after the rest of the country. Because um, it's through a narrow body of open water which will count as an amphibious crossing of sorts and World War 1 amphibious attacks are not really that good. So we are basically in the clear. So due to me building a bit more industry, my transport capacity is not in shambles at all. And yep, I was quite correct in my assessment. 
they can't advance there at all. So let's just keep driving into Russia. Well, w once you can get away with launching many, many attacks against um, the Russian Empire, just launch them. Uh, without like a single care, as long as you don't leave gaps in the front lines. Because the more territory Russia loses, the more inclined they are to just kind of <laughs> give it all up. Yep, they are completely dwarfed here in Kingish Shep, and they... Oh, I did not see what event that was. One second. Oh, the sinking of Lusitania. Mm, annoying, but not the end of the world. As you can see here, Russia has completely left Petrograd unguarded. So let's try to yoink that province from... Ah, them. Ah. They sent one division to reinforce it, but that's obviously not going to be enough at all. And there we go. Russian descent has skyrocketed so bad from my actions that they have real chances in their national provinces. And that basically spells doom for Russia, if we're going to be completely honest. Yeah, my submarines in Bremen are still being reinforced here, which is a little bit annoying. So while we're at it, let's research fuel oil logistics. Okay, we are one in Kiev, one militia division has been produced, so let's put it down in the Alsace-Lorraine line, I guess. Yeah, if we take Kiev, that's, well, Russia is already dead, there's just no point in me taking Kiev at this, po uh, at this stage, besides just to mess with them, which is also all fun and good, well, for Russia, of course. But soon enough, Russia is going to start getting events for them to surrender. So what I can do now potentially is build armored cars for my cavalry divisions to make them elite units of sorts. Because these units are going to be extremely helpful in the invasion against the United Kingdom. Assuming it does happen. So, since Russia is so weak and so descent riddled, they have 50% descent. Well, even 53, because, mm, yeah, every descent point decreases their combat ability by 0.5, so, yes. They have 53 descent, and I can just get away with slaughtering their units like that. Russia is a very difficult nation to play in World War One, primarily because if you get descent, you are going to die as them, to put it lightly. It just stacks and stacks and stacks, and it's difficult to deal with. But okay. Ugh, runny nose. Anyway. I don't really, as I've said, have to fight against Russia anymore, but I'm just going to take more territory, primarily to establish dominance, because I can, let's be honest. I can even maybe encircle them here, as a meme of sorts. Yep, <laughs> complete success here with the encirclement. Minus six divisions for them. And the Austrians are just kind of messing with the Russians as well by sending one HQ division out there. Amazing. Alright, well, another technology been, has been researched, so what I'm going after is Schwerpunk Doctrine, because it leads to, um, I believe, defensive uh, attrition, which increases your attack modifier, gives you organization, and Gives you 1% more ground. No, no, 1% less ground defense efficiency, apparently, but still. The attack metaphor cannot be underestimated, so yeah, I'm going to go after that one. So more militia has been constructed, and I'm going to set it down now. And I'm going into infantry, which is quite important, if I do say so myself. 
I mean, at this point, France is not probably going to attack, but it won't hurt, let's be honest. I just need one more batch of them to be produced so that I can just so that the line can be completely filled up. And there we go, the first Russian descent, uh, like government switch event has happened, and the Russians have Georgi Lvov. He's of course not going to save the country. Let's be honest. Uh, Russia at this point is beyond saving, and it's impossible to win World War One like this. No, Russia does not realize that, so let's push their crap in even more. Yeah, they have um, removed the copious amounts of descent. However, that's not going to help them out at all. And Italy just being Italy there doesn't really matter too much what they do, as long as they're not against me. Bulgaria, for some reason, has not joined again has not joined the war on my side, but I don't really think it matters too much. Now let's see, the submarines that were in Bremen are having fun again, I guess. So let's see how what the naval battle is going to be like. So afterwards, yep, yeah, this is going to be maybe a two-part series if everyone wants to see me invade the United Kingdom. First part will be just winning World War One the classical way, which I have basically done. And at this point I'm just waiting for Russia to collapse. If you really want to be brave, you can... Okay, wait. I've gotten the armored cars here for my cavalry divisions. Which I will use to my advantage. Yeah, these cavalry divisions are going to have to win here in Gatchina before they get their little brigade attachment. This one can get it too, because why not, let's be honest. But yes, as I've said, keep encircling the enemy um, as much as you can, because that will practically save you. And uh, by the way, you can't attach brigades. Oh, cool. Remark stimulates research. That's, that's very nice. Yeah, you can't attack brigades if you're Attach rather brigades if your units have the um, offensive modifier on them. So uh, yeah, don't go too wild with it, even if it is a very amazing thing to have. Yeah, the Austrians are just going wild at this point. Have to decimate the Russian army, and Kerensky is in charge. So once he becomes in charge, I can send Lenin back to Russia. Could have probably done it sooner, but hey, I was not paying attention and at this point I won, so who cares. Lunch Tomb Division, epic. One more militia for myself here. And Belgium too, let's be honest. So Lenin's gonna be back to Russia fairly soon, I hope. I mean, yeah. they are a mess right now, and I can't really see them doing well against me. So yes, they have lost. Yeah, as I said, it takes a little bit of time here before the Russian Empire fully capitulates. So your patience is going to be rewarded, trust me. I'm just curious if I can make it to Moscow at this point. Well, safely that is. I don't think I can. My units are a bit few in number. Well, my armies rather. Okay, it's. I got 1916 infantry, which is very nice. Yes, I'm not going to organize my navy. The uh, large navy that I have, because I'm uh, I'm only going to make a part two if everyone wants me to. Uh, part two is just going to be basically me invade the United Kingdom. Now the submarines don't particularly count because I can just plop them down com 
and yeah, let them do their own thing. But I meant like a proper naval reorg. The submarines, naval interdiction in this region, both control the sea. And the divisions that did not get the armored car attachment will get it. Because it is a fairly nice brigade at this point in time. The cavalry brigade is arguably maybe a little bit better, but what I do like about the armored car brigade is also the fact that it gives org, decreases softness and gives less vulnerability. Oh, these divisions here are encircled, so let's kind of help our Austrian boys here to deal with them, and they dealt with them ex uh, extremely well. So that's very nice to see. Yeah, this is basically Trotsky's no war, no peace plan, but it's a complete failure in this timeline, as you can see here. Okay, let's get into Serpuhu. It should not be too difficult. My TC, as you can see here, is very much overloaded. But it doesn't matter at this point. If your TC is overloaded, you can just build more industry or uh, garrison the territory that you're taking. But I can't be bothered to create specific garrison divisions for it. So I'm just going to make more industry. Because when there's more industry ever been a bad thing when you kind of can't really run out of resources at this point. I say that as my resources are starting to dwindle. Oh, there we go. Russian Revolution happened. Quickly, let's take Moscow before they send a peace offer. Uh, so close. No! It was so close. But whatever, I'm just going to offer hard conditions to Soviet Russia. And there we go. We got what we have wanted. And uh, building the Baghdad Railway is not really important. I'm not sure if you can release them. Oh yes, I can release the nation, so I'm going to uh, release them one by one. Yeah, of course, whatever. Just spawn here. What's the worst that can happen? Poland, yeah, Poland, there we go. And I can force the Poles to secede the, uh, the Polish border, but that's only after the war. Okay, Belarusian National Council. Sure, less of a strain on my TC. And yeah, Ukraine as a puppet is also very nice. Now, I don't think I can... Yeah, I need to be at peace for Belarus to accept a German king. So I think that is going to be the end here. For this part so comment down below if you want to see me trying to invade the United Kingdom uh, which will be rather you know interesting to do because it's also a mini tutorial of sorts on the Navy which you know I'll say I'm not super proficient at myself but if anyone wants to see how it approximately works do just as I said comment down below so I hope everyone enjoyed the video, thank you for the view, and I'll see everyone in whatever else I plan on doing. Goodbye everyone.